Dirk Durham, if you're watching, I don't suck at out calling for the record. Maybe my chuckles aren't and grunts aren't as good as yours. Nobody's are. But I don't suck at out calling and I prefer not to call. But right now, it's so smoky, we can't see. They're not bugling on their own. <coughs> I haven't seen a freaking cow yet. September 8th. I kind of only have five days to kill before we're gonna get out of here, so. The faster, high, strong. Here we go. What's impossible to prevent? Someone is bound to make it look easy. just came up out of that bottom. They were spooked, not by us, but by something. And uh, I hear a couple cow calls, like elk gathering cow calls, so they decided they might come to us. I'd, not one bull with them. All right, guys, welcome back to the Public Land Hustle. Took a five-day hiatus, went home, hung out with the family, got the antelope meat taken care of. We're back in Idaho. Jake Webb is with me, plus a special guest. We are looking for elk, looking for bugles, and we're struggling. Uh, we're in a gray area that I've hunted before. I killed an elk in here before. The sign's here, but the elk are not talking. So we're doing lots of cold call setups in the timber, in the good elk areas where the sign is plenty, and just setting up and waiting and trying to be patient, waiting for an elk to come in silent. It's not the sexiest elk hunting, but it's what we were left to do. So we're giving this spot everything we got. This was a 13 mile loop day. It was hard. So guys, it's like 6.30. We're gonna go hunt our way out, down. We found water here and we'll be out until dark. So hopefully we find some elk. What's up guys? Welcome to the Public Land Hustle. I want to introduce you to the man behind the camera. We got my good buddy Jake Webb. Go ahead. What's up, guys? And then over his shoulder is my buddy Jim. He works for Seacat Creative uh, and he helps manage that buck knife relationship that I have with him. And um, both these guys are in their early 30s and they're in great shape. And I'm a solo elk hunter with photographer and a videographer over my shoulder. It's all new, it's all new to me. So I'm just gonna pretend I'm solo elk hunting and uh, try to make good decisions. He's ragalicious. Five by five. Let me make sure these other elk aren't bulls. Once it gets dark, I haven't located her, a herd yet. This group's big. spot and stock ambush get in front of these elk glassing game not a vocalization game that suits my fancy um elk hunting was total dog shit where we were at um hunting pressure was picking up and so we came we went further south uh, saw a nice six point bull off the main road in the dark and um right now we're watching a big group 
we're up trying to be in front of them and get and figure out where they're going. It looks like they're going this way. Jim, Jim's behind the camera. He's with Seacat Creative. And um, I want to kill a bull today. So come with us. We're waiting to hear a bugle. We're trying to cut these elk off. That's all I know. It's a big group, 40 head. And there's a smaller group of 20. I think one bull, which we didn't get glassed up, but we heard him. Okay guys, so Jim and I are together. Jake is on two ridges over as our lookout. He's watching to see where this big group of elk are headed and we are patiently waiting at a pinch point. And we know that these elk are gonna come through this spot based on where they left this morning. We can kind of tell they're gonna come through this pinch point. So we gave it plenty of time, they never came through. What we didn't know is that the 40 head and the 20 head joined forces into one big herd. So we're trying to figure out if they snuck around the backside, we're glassing, I'm bugling, trying to locate to see where this herd went, and we're stumped. After a few minutes, we hear a bugle, and the bugle come from exactly where we had just been, no more than about an hour ago. So we pick up our gear and we haul butt towards where that bugle just came from. The thing that sucks is that we were not patient enough and the elk were literally in the timber right where we had been. And this is why you gotta be patient when elk hunting. So the bull bugles in the timber and I decide to answer him back. He doesn't want to play ball, and the next bugle we hear is he's pushing his herd. So we're trying to cut him off again, and elk are fast. And so we're hustling through the saddle to get to the other side, and we find out we run out of cover, we're too late. This bull sounds awesome. I do get glass on him. I'm trying to pester him, try to see if he wants, like what his temperature is. And he's more concerned with getting his cows pushed up the mountain than dealing with a, a you know any competition frustrated with where we've been for the last day and had heard one bugle Jim and I heard it together and we looked at each other like that's not far and we didn't get anything out of that no nothing today we came over to a totally different country different vibe um, and what I mean by that is it's a lot more like identifying elks travel routes and trying to figure out what they're gonna do before they do it and heading them off and keeping the wind right and so we did that pretty good today. We got to our vantage. We saw 60 plus. We saw them coming. We saw them which way they were going. We headed to cut them off. Um, they zigged uh, when we thought they were gonna zag and they came back over our tracks. Luckily we heard the bull bugling and we have Jake over here as lookout uh, and he's waving his shirt and we knew, okay, something's up. And I thought it was a different group of elk but it's the same 60 head with one bull. And they, they're they headed around this rim and they're gonna bed right over there. We know where they're gonna bed and we know where they're gonna come out tonight. So that's good, but the problem was is that bull was freaking right where we were hanging out no more than an hour ago. And we surmised that the elk had gone over to the next ridge. Uh, so what they ended up doing is they milled around a lot longer than we thought. Um, and when because they lingered we jumped to conclusions they came out our back door we just missed them we ran out of cover and you're not gonna keep up with elk on that steep of face and they're heading up and they'll probably be at their bedding in about 45 minutes and it's just right over there and it's nice it's at one patch of dark timber and when they come out they come out about half hour before light and it'll be a train of them luckily that bulls bugling and we will probably take the four-wheelers around and cut them off tonight.
Okay, so plan for the evening is we watched where the herd went this morning. We know where they bed. So we took the dustiest trail we could possible and drove up. We're gonna walk in about two and a half miles. We're gonna go make a little blind with some brush and we're gonna wait for them to come out of their bed and shoot one on their way down the hill. All right guys, so we are hiked into the bedding area. We spot a different sex point in the bedding area immediately. We put it to bed, so to speak. We saw it just pop up. Walk through the wide opening and we just put them to bed. Now, obviously we had to sit and wait for the wind to switch. So it took several hours of us staging 1200 yards away. And we had this bull through the phone scope. Jim had him pinged. Got some really good footage. And finally, when he got up and the wind switched, we decided we had maybe 20, 30 minutes to cover almost a mile. And we knew that we had to haul butt for him. We wanted to make sure we had a good heading on if he was, was he hanging out? Was he gonna feed for a bit? Where are his cows? And uh, once we decided that we had a, a move, based on his body language and the cows were nowhere near him, we figured this bull was just hanging out solo doing the same thing we were. He was waiting for the big herd to come out. Just go right freaking to him. So this is a perfect situation where there's a good shooter bull. He's by himself. He's waiting for the herd to come out as well. He's probably gonna scoop up some cows. But let's get to him before the herd comes out. So we start hauling butt towards him. We had about a mile to cover. Uh, I'm used to hunting solo. I'm not used to having a videographer and a photographer, but these guys were awesome. They kept up. Um, I ran some just, you know, some ideas by them. We were all in agreement. So let's go make a move on this bull. He's a nice, probably 306 point in Idaho. Plenty good for me. We checked the wind. The wind was good, and we started hauling right towards him. If this wind is doing that, we're going for it. took us about 20 minutes to cut the distance down to just hundreds of yards and then obviously we had to give up knowing his location so we had to kind of go off on X I dropped a pin where I saw him last and we're keeping this ridge line between us and him and we're just trying to catch up and get in front and hopefully shoot him without him even knowing we're there once we get to the edge where we know we're close I decide to peek over and I have my rangefinder and I'm ready I'm knocked up and I get a glimpse of his rack on the skyline. I range his rack, his actual rack, at 30 yards. We're losing light, and if we'd just been there a little bit earlier, we probably could have just waited for him to pop out, but he basically is trying to cross this ridge, and if you look closely in your screen, you're gonna be able to see his rack on the edge of the skyline here with the timber in the background. He actually hears us walking towards him, so I'm like trying to cow call. I don't have a bugle tube where I can bugle at him. So I'm just going to try to get him to stop and see if I can get him to maybe come back in. And right here, he's at about 112 yards, quartering away. That's not a shot. It's very windy. I'm bugling at him without a, you know, just my diaphragm read. And he knows something's up. And we know that we basically just kind of lost out on this opportunity. Rarely do you see a bull like this without cows in the evening with dependable thermals. And it was just a, a great encounter. Super excited to share it with Jim and Jake. We weren't patient enough. Kind of the theme of the day, but that's elk hunting. After 9 a.m. We just put the group to bed that has the bull that we'd like to hunt. No,